Hello, thank you for joining. As you can see, I'm in front of the kill chamber here in the dual mob farm. I say dual mob farm because currently all we see is drowned and the thing is pretty much filled up. If I zoom in on my map on the left hand side, you'll see there are very few in the river biome down below, which I'm gonna go into free cam mode. I'll pop out here. It is quite a large river biome and this was an ideal spot to build this farm. And as you saw in the time lapse of the video before, this unfortunately is like the fourth time I've built this. And then I have a lot of redstone sorting everything out. Now, before we get into that a little bit, I will go ahead and cover the technical side, but let's go ahead and kill these guys off. I have my inventory full up so that I don't pick up some of these drops. And then if we look at the map on the side, you'll see that the drowns start to spawn in, but they do come in rather slow, um, especially during the daytime. And then you can see the items are being sorted over there and my word the xp <laughs> okay let's go ahead and throw that in there now i'll go ahead and turn on the upper section of the mob farm it is a cross between the nenbaum mob farm and something i saw <coughs> excuse me sorry enxo4 do where he used scaffolding to actually send a signal up to flush the floors so instead of, because mobs can no longer spawn on scaffolding, I just basically did top slabs for the spawning pad and still used the scaffolding column to send the signal up. And as you can see, the mobs are starting to drop in. A large portion of them do die. Uh, this produces so much, it doesn't really matter. You can see them on the mini map on the left there, they're spawning in. Uh, this farm really produces a lot. And this uh, location took such little prep to spawn proof the area it was just ideal and unfortunately like i mentioned in my previous video we did lose access to that world there was some uh, world corruption and the files were basically corrupt we couldn't load so they ended up going with a different seed unfortunately and now we're playing on a completely different world so this is up for grabs and come back here those guys are so quick all right now i'm going to go into creative mode here and We'll just kind of fly around and cover some of this. You can see that the items are being processed and dropped down in. There is one break in this. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, but sometimes items will get picked up in between the void space of the hopper there. Not too fussed about it. And this is the item gate section that I took from Rapscallion. What it does is slow items down, uh, basically locks the hopper, and the next item to get processed through will be delayed a little bit. And this section here is uh well yeah i'm sorting out for arrows which you can see it's full up now and what I, i'm using that to go into this non-stackable item separation what it is going to do is take all of the non-stackable items anything like shovels swords things of that nature will go into this right hand side of it and then the armor and stuff will go straight down into the left hand side into these dual shulker loaders below that and then once they're full they get broke off and you can see the armor is there and then here i've got some tridents a shovel some bows just the other non-stackable items um, and then the other item sorting is just the standard impulse sv item sorter with uh Oops, I just picked up something. I mean, creative. Uh, several items all the way around. And if you're worried, concerned about using the arrows to work in that, you can see I've got more than enough. This backlogged. And then they started to overflow into the rest of the system. And there you have it. And then basically, I'm going to pick up everything because I'm in creative. But the XP just keeps flowing. It does produce a lot of XP. It produces a lot of drops. I am also not stopping the spiders from dropping. You can see I have the string right here. However, we do not get any of the um, spider eye from this farm because you're not manually killing the spiders. Let me go back into creative. I'll go up here and show off the upper section of this farm. Like I said, I'm using a scaffolding tower to flush the floors and it's just the standard Nenbaum or El Mango, I can't remember which, I believe it was Nembom farm. And I've got a clock going here and then the redstone torch tower down there turns this on or off. It'll basically lock the floors in a flooded state so that they cannot spawn any mobs. 
And then down in here, I am using water to pull the spiders up into here where they will basically suffocate and drown. And then the string is pulled out and sent into the storage system down below. And yeah, with this, it is rare that mobs do actually land on this, but it does happen. Uh, well, there you have it. Uh, essentially, this is the farm in a, as it is. Uh, this was the most ideal location. I just screenshot that. I don't know why. Fat fingered it. For this farm, I didn't have to do much in the way of prep. I really didn't. Uh, don't have the despawn sphere in this world. Um, this was my single player creative world to mock this design up and come up with it. I did build this on the server, which we unfortunately lost. Now, if you take the download of this mob farm, decide to build it for yourself, understand that that orange square right there is the origin point of the mob farm or the schematic by itself. And let me go and I'll show you. So wrong spot, I'll go in here. Like this is a selection of the area and then I have a manual origin turned on, which is that spot right there on there with the torch. And those were the coordinates in this world for this loading in. So you would want to be at Y level 164 or about to load the schematic in and then lock it into place and then build it. Well, that's all the, for the video. I do thank you for your time and you have a great day.